I tell you what, I can I can really feel my spirit being tested here by somebody I, I thought was a friend and took in as a friend, you know, spiritually called on the phone. It's just like it never works. Never works with anybody that I talk to. It's like I cannot find one person on this earth other than Vanessa, to be honest with you. Vanessa. Vanessa, and she knows who she is, and she's commented here before, here at Telling Truth, or TS Daily Bible Study, excuse me, and um, she is a Facebook friend, she's asked questions, she's given her opinions on stuff that maybe we don't always agree on stuff, but it's just done with respect, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that I got extremely uh, disrespect, you know, and y'all saw me on that. I think it was Friday study where I was very angry about this person who I had taken in as a friend. And uh, he took me as a friend. And then he, but this person has a lot of paranoia about Mystery Babylon, like we all should. But we've talked so many times about it, and then he's gonna he's gonna call me out on it. Now he's going to apologize for it, but then he's going to attack me in another way. So we're gonna go over it, and we're gonna go over what I do here at this Bible study, the things I've said here at this Bible study, and um, I will tell you this: see if it jogs your memory. I have always said that when it comes to the time frame, it's speculation. I say, let God be true and every man a liar. This is my opinion on time frames. But time frames, I have always said, are my absolute weakest genre of the Bible. I just, uh, it's too much math. It's too much of a word problem. I'm not good with word problems. And um, I don't know if the Lord is just trying to make me delve deeper into it. If so, he'll carry me through it. So let's, let's go with, I copied and pasted verbatim his email to me. And so for starters, I do need to apologize for the 33 thing. Apologies. Fantastic. We could have stopped right there. Anytime you screw up with somebody, let's just say you cheat on your spouse and you somehow come in and apologize for it and they've forgiven you. And on on the day they're forgiving you, you attack them again for something else. No. Nah. That's, that's, that is, it's just dumb. <laughs> you don't come at somebody with an apology and in the same email follow up with basically calling them a false teacher and a liar. Do you? Well, let's get into it. I was watching the video and saw potential 33 ammo for Mystery Babylon. First of all, that don't even make any sense. No, the 33 was something that bothered you, Justin, because you're the one that says, let me find it. So again, I sincerely apologize for the 33 incident. You know I'm always on high watch for those things. So no, this is about you having a problem with maybe me being Mystery Babylon because you're admitting right here, way farther down, that it's you that are on high watch to see if anybody's a member of Mystery Babylon. So when you saw me, and again, in this extremely lengthy email, 
this is what the email looks like, folks. So I'm going to scroll down. This is why I blew it up for you. Okay. Plus, it's got his email at the top, and I don't want to scroll and accidentally. But you see the copy and paste. It's still highlighted where I copied and pasted. So this is verbatim. So ammunition for Mystery Babylon, that's a twist on his part to soften what was really on his mind. So he's not being very honest, is he? He says, you know, I'm always on a high watch for those things, because what he's saying is I'm always on a high watch to see if somebody's a member of Mystery Babylon. Follows up with, hope you're doing well, my friend. I was doing well until you came along, Buster. So he's going to come back up here and try to hoodwink us. He's going to try to come on and hoodwink us into that he saw a potential ammo for Mystery Babylon. Ammunition that Mystery Babylon could use against us. Now, he just got through saying down there later on, didn't he? That it was really about him thinking I was Mystery Babylon because he's always watching out for it. He needs to protect this channel from Mystery Babylon, exposing it as Mystery Babylon. Potential ammo for Mystery... No sense whatsoever. So instead of just apologizing for saying something stupid, he tries to explain why he did it and then lies about it. And I exposed a lie. Then we're going to come down and say the entire thought was as long as it took to type it. And I move on. Didn't tell me where in the video that I had said some uh, sort of put a three and a three together. But I'm going to tell you something, y'all. What I do here every day or what the Lord has me do every day. Ain't nobody got time for that. And there's something in his heart or in his spirit that has him come at me like that. Anyway, I'm sorry for that, truthfully. Fantastic. Second part, though, here he comes. I'm going to apologize to you for being really stupid. But now I'm going to come at you for being a false teacher in the same email. Second part, though, <laughs> you claim, which that automatically means I'm a liar. That means I claim it, but I'm not real about it, doesn't it? You want me, and he should say, or anybody else, to come at you with biblical discussion about something you teach, and in the past, I have, and you're ready for this, and you literally brush it off. I literally brush it off. I told you, this is what he's told me. I told you I have a problem with you teaching that we are the two witnesses and that tribulation. What do they want to auto air auto witnesses? This, 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 this. Whatever. All right, we'll correct it. So it'll go away. I told you I have a problem with you teaching that we, the church, are the two witnesses. Now, I'm going to tell you where I get this from. Best I got. And I've told y'all. Many times, haven't I? Many times. When it comes to this two witnesses stuff, this is just my opinion. It's just my opinion. I am not dogmatic about it. There are things I am very dogmatic about. 
no free will. Hell is not eternal torment. But I want you It says right here at the very beginning of the book of Revelation, and have made us kings and priests. And what I tell you is, that's the church, and that's the two candlesticks, potentially. I'm not dogmatic about it. It's the best I have on it. based off of all of these things, and I will give my power to the two witnesses. And the two witnesses are what? They are represented by two candlesticks. It says these are the two olive trees standing before the God of the earth. And I tell you that my theory is that it's the church in that the church is kings and priests. Now you see in the book of Revelation that the church is divided into seven because it's going to go through the cleansing process. Seven is the number for cleansing, 2 Kings 5.14. And the church is represented by seven candlesticks because the church is divided into seven well up here just a few more verses earlier the church is divided into two kings and priest and then over here in revelation eleven two candlesticks the two witnesses the kings and priests of the earth it's a theory so we know there's a time frame given for the book of for the end times in the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel. There's a time frame given of three and a half years, 42 months, 1260 days. But then Jesus says something. Jesus is going to tell us that he cuts those days short. It's Revelation 24, excuse me, it's Matthew 24, verse 22. And except those days be shortened, what days? For there shall be great tribulation in the verse above it. And the great tribulation has set forth a certain amount of days, does it not? Yes, it does. 1260 days, 42 months, three and a half years. And it says, and Jesus says, and except those days be shortened, there should be no flesh say, but for the elect say, those days shall be shortened. Which tells you, which tells me, you, you let God be true and every man a liar. You take whatever I tell you to prayer. But I'm not going to let you call me a liar or a false teacher. I'm giving you my best opinion on it. I don't sit there. I'm not dogmatic about this. I don't sit there and tell you, may, may God remove my salvation if I'm... No. And he's going to go on to quote the Bible about anybody that adds to these words. <laughs> He's going to remove that, you know, just goaded me right up. And then it was like, ends with, okay, my friend, thank you, my friend, see you, my friend, all, you know, he's going to end all lovey-dovey. 
Mm -mm. We're done. Pull me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Mm -mm. He got me the first time with, with the Club 33 accusation. But this, 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 mm -mm. we're done now. You can't get close to this guy. And he's gone to a war with everybody that he's ever followed or had anything to do with on on youtube goes to war gets banned gets banned gets cut off changes his name changes th there's already like red flags all over the place but i'm all, I'm always for you know what repentance that's fine he can be a sheep all day long lost sheep found sheep eventually whatever the situation all day long but not on my watch anymore he's gonna go be a sheep on his own time, not mine. Oh, sorry, I had to do some laundry. So I don't know what I was saying exactly, but let's just get on with it, shall we? I've told you I have a problem with you teaching that we are the two witnesses. Fantastic. And we talked about it. I discussed it with him. I gave him my opinion on it. Just like I've given y'all now. He can go back and study every single revelation study that I've done. If he goes back and watches all 10, because I've got 10 revelation studies, he will find in there, along with my Daniel studies where it mentions days, that I am absolutely positively not dogmatic about days. I just give my best opinions on it. I want to give you the proof right here. I went ahead and looked it up. This is my Daniel ninth study. This is my last Daniel study. Now, I just now did. I'm just now doing Daniel's 10th study. I just started it, but this is the very end. I want you to listen to what I say. In thy lot at the end of days. I will tell you when it comes to this all these numbers of end times prophecy. I will tell you when it comes to all these numbers and end times prophecy. I am not dogmatic about it. I am not dogmatic about it. This is not hell is not eternal torment. There you go. That I set on March 1st, 2023. And today is basically May 1st. I said two months ago to the day. It's still 4.30. It's still April 30th. But um, you with me on this? Folks, this is speculation. And sometimes if I say it like it's not speculation, that's the way I mean it. So, and, and oftentimes I say it. And there I am saying it right there on March 1st, just two months ago. Okay. Let's get on with it. I told you I have a problem with you teaching that we are the two witnesses and that the tribulation will only be three and a half days. Let's get into the tribulation of, of potential teaching of Revelation three and a half days. And by the way, Elijah coming, he's going to give me an Elijah Bible verse. Elijah could be. And I saw an angel fly in the midst of, remember, an angel. Okay. Messenger. This could be Elijah. I have no clue. Flies the midst of having, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. This could be his Malachi 4 or 5 that he's talking about. We're going to get to this Malachi 4 or 5. Because he's, he's going to tell me in this email that he's given me this Malachi 4 or 5, 6 before. And I'm like, I don't ever remember. Can you document for me? I said, I said to him in an email reply, can you document for me? where you told me on a text, because this is the first time I've ever seen it. I found it fascinating. Behold, I will send you the Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. It doesn't say Elijah and Moses. It doesn't say Elijah and anyone else. 
and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. See, that all sounds like something that's taking place in the Old Testament times. But the, the great and dreadful day of the Lord is the wrath of God. So, if this is Elijah and somebody else, I'm open to that. I just don't think it is. But I'm open to it. And you can't get anybody out there on the internet or ethernet that is absolutely sure of it. They all tell you through a speculative. Who are the two witnesses in the book of Revelation? Got questions. Probably the biggest experts on anything. And they're horrible. <laughs> but they're known to be like the experts of the experts. They got YouTube channels. They got this website. And I go to them because they will give you the Bible verses that you can then take and teach truth from. And these guys are all over the place also. Could be this, could be that. There are three primary theories that identify the two witnesses in Revelation. Moses and Elijah, Enoch and Elijah, and two unknown believers whom God calls to be his witnesses at the end times. I will tell you, my opinion is, if that's what it is, it'll be a male and a female. And that will be sort of an Adam and Eve, kind of an, as it began with Adam and Eve, it would end with a male and a female figure in Christ on the earth. Just a hunch. Based off of some things that I have seen. And that, you know, just things that have just sort of come my way in different ways. And uh, if you noticed in Ghostbusters, who was the enemy? Well, the enemy was the gatekeeper and the key master. It was the, this reunification of a male and a female in Ghostbusters. And they were the bad guys, remember? Because that's what they do. They always... They turn upside down the good guys and the bad guys. Well, the ghost busters are the ones that are what? They're killing the two witnesses. They're killing. They're destroying. See, they always make God out to be the evil in their movies. Our God to be the evil. Like Batman is the Illuminati's Antichrist and all the villains are characteristics of God. Like Jesus spoke in parables. So you have the Riddler and so forth. So... It could be two unknown believers. It could be a male and a female. A Batman and a Robin, but a female Robin. There's just no telling. And Adam and Eve. And, um, you know, In No Time to Die also was about, finally was about love and James Bond finding love. Again, the unification of a male and a female at the very end you know but their world is always the upside down world of it but it's just interesting it's something to keep you know i just keep it in the back of my mind that the two unknown believers that, and i've never even seen anybody say that before but because of justin's accusations it's thrown me into this study and it's interesting that they say two unknown believers whom God calls to be as witnesses at the end times. If that's the case, I do believe it will be a male and a female. I sure do. And so he goes on to give all the different reasons of why it could be either. I told you I have a problem with you teaching that there are two witnesses and that the tribulation will only be three and a half days. So when we go to this, two witnesses, the two candlesticks standing before God of the earth, and if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. Now, 
I said I do believe in my last study that I think this was figurative language. If not, then it's what I told Justin, but I do remember saying that that is figurative language in my best guesstimation. This was my last teaching on the two witnesses. I think what you're seeing here is a very abstract of God's wrath. Because remember in Revelation, it talks about how these are the prayers of the saints. And I think those prayers of the saints are for God to do his wrath based off what they did to them. I love you very much. Ask so the avenging, you know, how long will it take Lord to avenge, you know, what they've done to us and the smoke of the incense in the throne in heaven. It's the prayers of the saints, all that kind of stuff. Do you know the Bible verse where it says, do you not know that you will judge the angels? First Corinthians 6, 3 Bible hub. I guarantee you got questions. Don't, don't teach that properly. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Where in the Bible do we judge angels? Well, we don't really judge angels, do we? God judges. We are a witness to God's judging because they encompass the camp of the saints in Revelation 20. They surround all the fallen angels and all the people of the earth that have ever existed on the earth. All goats. But it says Satan is loosed for season. He surrounds and and, and he uh, what is it called? He deceives the nations, so all the dead are raised, and they're deceived into believing that they're going to destroy Jesus and his kingdom, and they surround Israel during the end of the thousand year millennial reign. And fire comes down from heaven and devours them. And that's judgment. It says it's judgment. Two verses before the flame or three or four verses before the flame, it says judgment. And the devil and the beast and the false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire after that. Because they don't get death and hell like the humans do. Fallen angels can't die, so they just go directly into the lake of fire, burnt, and will continue burning. But th that's when that's the that's when we are we really judging the angels? No, we're a witness to God judging them. So that's that that is said in the abstract. So I think that it's possible that this two witnesses. Is an abstract. Now, it's just a theory that these two witnesses could be an abstract of the church going through the Great Tribulation. And when it starts saying that if any man hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies, there's nothing that correlates with this in any epistle, in any Old Testament, any gospel, any all of it discourse where Jesus specifically talks about the end times, like where he says, lest I cut those days short. If any man hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. If it's literally two people, like a like a an Adam and Eve figure at the there's nothing else that corroborates it in the Bible, but it could be. Justin's telling us for sure that it's Elijah based off of Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Could be.
These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in those days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. None of this is described anywhere else in the Bible, not even later on in Revelation. You just have God's plagues. But I think it's the prayers of the saints and God fulfilling their prayers when he does do his wrath. That's another theory. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill him. When the Antichrist rises with that spiritual indweltation, when he's indwelt with Satan, Well, I think we have World War III, famine and death, and then he's going to come back, seemingly have risen from the dead, declare himself to be God. There's an image that speaks that everybody has to worship, and that every all goats will worship, and then all goats are now possessed, and they're going to go around and start killing sheep very rapidly. And I don't think that the church could last Instead of three and a half years, it turns into three and a half days. And it says that there are it does say that they, after three and a half days, make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So notice how it says shall make war against them. Now I want to go, I want to take you to Daniel 7, 21 through 25. And the horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. And the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill him. Who is that? Who is that in Revelation eleven seven? 7? And who is this? In Daniel 7, 21. That's the church, isn't it? And I beheld that same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So when I go back and read, the beast that is sent out of the bottom of the pit shall make war against them. This is the two witnesses that he's talking about. That I think is the church. When the Antichrist is dwelt with Satan, he is going to make war with the church. And at the great tribulation, their dead bodies will lie in the streets. Many will be in Israel. That great city where our Lord was crucified. It says it right there. Also where our Lord was crucified. So the great city is Israel. Shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. And they of people, kindreds, and tongues, and nations shall, shall see their dead bodies. And what does it say? Three days and a half. So God gave us three and a half years of the great tribulation. But does it really last three and a half days? It's up for you to decide. It's speculation. I'm giving you my best. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. In other words, <laughs> when the fallen angels have inhabited the human bodies and are using them as an avatar to kill the sheep, they're not going to then go out and bury them. And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another. Again, I think this is the abstract. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. We who tell the truth torment the goat world from day one they have always killed all sheep all goats have always killed all sheep we all through much tribulation enter the kingdom and after three days and a half the spirit of life 
from God entered into them and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. They heard a great voice out of heaven saying, come up hither. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. Later on, we do see Jesus comes in a cloud and reaps his church. Revelation 14, I believe it is. You can't take everything literally. Because if you take everything literally, then there's too many things that contradict. There's too many things that don't make sense. Malachi 4, 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That could be, could be. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred and tongue and nation saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for his judgment has come. I think as every bit as much as being one of the two witnesses, because notice it just said Elijah in Malachi 4, 5, 6. It didn't say a two witnesses. So if it's going to fit one, then it's going to fit that one angel, isn't it? I went through many commentaries on this, on Malachi. None of them tell you anything of the sorts that anything like he's the two witnesses from Malachi. But then Got Questions did, said it's a possibility due to Malachi. Then I would always tell you anything's possible as long as it's in line with the word. But you're going to come at me and call me basically evil. I told you I have a problem with you teaching that we are the two witnesses and that tribulation will only be three and a half days. In Revelation 11, it's more than clear. So there's Revelation 11, two prophets, olive trees, power. So he copied and pasted it from New Living Translation. Their dead bodies will lie in the main street of Jerusalem. No one will be allowed to bury them. So he, he copied and pasted the whole thing for me. And then he said, the word is more than clear about the tribulation being 42 months. And yes, I will also say the word is more than clear that Jesus says he cuts those days short. And that there will be two witnesses. We cannot stop the rain or turn the water to blood. Well, God can give us power to do anything. Again, the end times will be very supernatural. But no, I don't think, I think that's written in the abstract. I think it's figurative. I think that's God's wrath. Not wrath from the church. We cannot be the two witnesses. Well, we might be. I'm not dogmatic about it. There is... There also only is two people God took to heaven. That's Elijah and Enoch. Hmm. The two witnesses, possibly? Maybe. Well, we know for certain Elijah is one of them based off this verse. And that's the one we've gone over in Malachi 4 or 5. His preaching will turn the hearts to the fathers of their children and the hearts of the children of their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. I brought this up to you and you wrote it off immediately. Well, I sent him back an email and I said, can you document on a text or an email where you gave me this verse? This is the first I've heard of it. And I said, did you just mention while I'm driving on the interstate, which is a lot of times when I would call him? Because I have, I have a lot of dead time when I'm doing that. Because I'm just driving. So I'll always call my friend Justin. Who's no longer my friend. This isn't, this isn't how friends communicate with each other. I brought this up to you. And you wrote it off immediately. Well, if I'm driving down the interstate. And you go look at Malachi 457. What did I say that wrote it off? That's just not my character to do that. I'm sorry. This is a big time character assassination, in my opinion. 
from a so-called friend because watch how he closes it out. So it's very, it's what we call passive aggressive. Start off with an apology, end with an apology, end with my friend, but in, in the middle, rip somebody to shreds. And I solemnly declare to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy. Now he's going to quote the Bible and talk about how I'm one of the people adding and subtracting to the Bible. So I'm going to receive the plagues. And I solemnly declare to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy written in this book, if anyone adds anything to what is written here, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. And if anyone removes any of the words from this book of the prophecy, God will remove that person's share in the entire tree of life and in the holy city as described in this book, Revelation 22, 18 through 19, NLT. You're the one changing the word. So he quoted a Bible verse. That talks about those that do these things are goats. And then he's going to tell me that I'm a goat because I'm doing it. You're the one changing the word to viewers. Saying the tribulation is only three and a half days based off your opinions that goes against the word. You're the one saying the entire church will be the two witnesses, which makes absolutely zero sense to me. Okay. You got to, you got to, you got to go believe what you got to believe. I don't sit around and, I don't sit around and walk around my house. I don't sit around and drive around in my car ever saying, I know for sure the two witnesses are the church. Ever do I think that in my mind. Nor do I portray that. And if so, that if there was ever a point where I did portray that, I want to make very sure what my stance is on this. I just let it go because you have your mind made up and there is no changing it, even though I did use the actual word to support my argument on this. You know, I always suggest people get their own YouTube channel and teach their own gospel. I wonder if I watched Justin go through the entire word of God, if I'd be able to go um, help. <laughs> also, my family and I went out of town to stay with my best friend and his family for the weekend. So that's why I just got around to replying to your message. So again, I sincerely apologize for the 33 incident. You know, I'm always on a high watch for those things. I hope you're doing well, friend. This hopefully won't come between our friendship and I can... And I plan on catching up on the studies tomorrow. God bless. You watch my studies all you want. But I tell you what I'm going to do. I want to hide user from channel. I don't want to hear from him anymore. I'm going to block him on my cell phone. He can email me. I'm not ever going to touch that cell phone based off him again. And um, it's just not the way you go about your business. That's not the way the church communicates with the church. It's not the way the church communicates with the church. It's not the way church members communicate with each other. So... You know, and there were, I think, two different times where the apostles went their separate ways. So it's okay for church members to both be sheep, but to go their separate ways. Paul and Peter go their separate ways. It's Paul and Barnabas. They went, they uh, separated. Paul took Silas. And... Uh, When division becomes multiplication between Paul and Barnabas, resulting in their going their separate ways. They had a little bit of an argument or an agreement. Peter got scorched, it says here. In the fire of Paul's righteous indignation, Peter got scorched. 
he was doing just fine with the brothers in Antioch. So it's okay for he and I go your separate way. You in in if this person creates another YouTube channel and comes back on, um, if he comes back on with a massive apology, great. The email, fine. Email me. Doesn't matter. But to apologize multiple times in an email where you rip me to shreds as a false teacher, it's very passive aggressive, upside down, backwards behavior. If you come to somebody with an apology, you just sort of let all of that go ahead on and glide and call it a day. And then a week later, you say, hey, by the way, we never really did. I never really, I've still got a problem with this. And um, you never really addressed this Malachi thing. I gave it to you while, we're, while you were driving. And because um, he can't produce any email where he gave it to me or a text message. Guaranteed. I don't remember nothing about it. If I just glanced over something, then I glanced over something because I literally at 61 and three quarters years old didn't catch something. But he's telling you that I purposefully was given biblical information that was the truth in God's word. But as a false teacher who removes and adds things to the Bible, I ignored his biblical teaching and wisdom to me to resolve a biblical misteaching. And that's a lie. But that's how he came at me. So anyway, love you. Love y'all. <laughs> and uh, as far as Justin... I love you, buddy, but you got to go your own way and you've got to let me go. You've got to let me go my own way. And I'm going to pray to the Holy Spirit to keep me, just to give me as much wisdom as he would allow in his word. I will never know everything in that Bible. And I will tell you, Justin will never know everything in that Bible. But I hope I've covered everything from A to Z that I was accused of. Because that's how I roll. That's how I sleep at night. Somebody comes at me, I'm going to cover every bit of their accusation. From A to to Z. And I hope at the very least, y'all all see that I did that. Love y'all.